the audience is this way, so this needs to be here, and this, my shoulder needs to be tucked down this way, my armpit needs to be rotated this way. Like, there's a million things going through my head in this position. Hi, I'm Scout Forsyth. I'm a professional ballerina with American Ballet Theater. I've been dancing for 12 years and professionally now for six. And I danced on some of the most famous and incredible stages that the world has to offer, including France and Russia. Today, I'm going to attempt to recreate the hardest parts of a variation I'm not too familiar with. The Sugar Plum Fairy Variation from the Nutcracker. Two, and ah! Whew. Getting a good workout in today. I'm going to be going over the choreography today. I'm going to be learning hair and makeup, and I'm going to wear the tutu for the actual variation. In order to nail the variation, I'm going to need to work on B plus position, bourrée steps, point work, arabesque, pique menege, and coupe jeté jumps. The hardest part of point work is rolling through the feet and making sure I'm using every single muscle in my foot. The hardest part about arabesque is making sure that you're on your leg and keeping your back up without going too far forward or too far back. So the sugar plum variation comes from the final scene when the prince cavalier and his sugar plum fairy dance together. This is her variation to show how beautiful and regal she is and where she is in the land of sweets and it ends beautifully and I get dizzy and that's how the variation goes. I'm gonna go mark through the sugar plum variation. So the first section is her coming out, starting on the corner, and she's in B plus. And in this moment, I'm really thinking of where I'm angled towards the audience. The audience is this way, so this needs to be here, and this, my shoulder needs to be tucked down this way, my armpit needs to be rotated this way. Like there's a million things going through my head in this position. And you go into the first step, and this is a little bore step, so it's just a little do 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 do. Point work is when you go past your flat foot on the ground. So your flat foot goes up onto your toes. You're dancing completely and 100% on your toes. And the reason that point shoes were invented was so the ballerina looked like she was floating. And then this motion of pas de bourree with legs up in high passe, it, the pas de bourree has to be like a little do, do, do. There ha can't be any slow movements to it or heavy where it's like, oh, I just want to get it done. Like there has to be a lightness and an airiness about it. Sometimes what happens is I feel like dancers go and dance and then they, there's this loss of connection between the fingers and the head, which is such a vital thing for a ballerina to have every little motion. You kind of follow the fingers and then look out into the audience to go through things. And then stepping into the arabesque, you have to have weight going forward to go up. Whew. It's a hard one. <laughs> What makes it so hard is that I have to remember that in order to get on the balance, you have to have the hinging at the hips here. And if you don't fully go for it, it's not gonna happen. If you're back here on your leg trying to make it work, it's, it's not gonna happen. You fully have to go for it in order to work. So the next section is the pique menege turn. Pique turns themselves, it's a very simple movement. You're just doing that, turning around. But what makes it exciting is the head, the upper body, the shoulders, the quickness, the speed, the attack of this particular dance. You start from the back and your leg goes out forward and you step on a straight leg going into that turn. So the PK part is difficult because you have to know where your body weight is going into it and when you go into it you have this turning motion and it's a constant turning. The dancer goes around the whole stage in a big circle formation. Technically we think of it as a box because it's easier to cover every single corner if you think going in a box it turns into a circle and so pk menage is those pk turns constantly going in that big circle so starting from one area and going all the way around the stage and finishing on the other side at the end of the pk turns those are for me stamina wise where i get the most frustrated and low on energy the pk menage some of the major points that i'm thinking about a lot of them is upper body, having the upper body held, but not pushing down so your ribs can't move when you're doing the pique turn, because a turn comes from the upper body and the ability to move the rib cage around your spinal cord. And then out of the pique turns comes the coupe jeté. 
Jete means to dart out, and that's one of the major movements. It's a quick, fast, coupe jete jump. Your legs split up in the air, but you're not going up. You are moving continuously in this jump, darting over something. It's that's the only way to do it and complete it well. So going through that, and then we do the piques, 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 and then we end it from the corner coming to the end. And this is the final part of the dance. And it's like the last moment of this dance where you're like, all right, I just gotta push and go through it. And then the pose, like that last pose of chasse up and having that final moment of the breath going and then you walk off stage and that's the end of it. And then you run off stage and you're like, where's the water? This is Charlotte again. <laughs> <laughs> and she's going to be coaching me through the sugar plum variation today from the Nutcracker. Tchaikovsky, he wanted the dance of the sugar plum fairy to be like drops of water from the fountain. The quickness of it, it's like puddles of water. Right. Like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Let's just go from the beginning. Okay. And so you come out from the wings. And can we do a bit of a plie and say, here I am. Very nice. And up. Ooh. Okay, <laughs> now do that with a breath. And turn your hands to and, ah. and turn. And excellent. There you got it. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, that felt better. Okay. And now we're going to do the PK menage. Come to me. Good. Nice, very nice. Well, this solo looks deceptively easy, <laughs> but it's not really. In order to keep the speed and to keep up with the music, you have to move your head and your eyes. If your eyes are moving, your head will go around. Okay. Next, I'm gonna put on the costume and do my hair and makeup for the Sugar Plum Variation. We are going to do her makeup for stage. When you're on the stage, the light just washes you out and you become very flat. So we rebuild your face to be dimensional. Um, we can also use contouring to distort your face. So I'm gonna start with just a very soft highlight powder and we put it right on your cheekbones. And you can find your cheekbones. If you open your jaw, you can feel where your jaw pops. And, right, mm. and you close it right where that separation is, that's where your cheekbones are. And that's, that's where so the contour cool. goes. Specifically on ballerinas, I like to bring the blush up and around their hairline up here and contour with the blush versus a contour color. We're gonna move on to the eyes. For Sugar Plum Fairy, we're gonna do some nice soft pinks. I like to do shadow and liner. And I'm going to extend your wing, if you will, past your eye on the outside to make your eyes look bigger. So you'll see I'll leave a tiny bit of space. We're gonna keep it open. On the stage, we tend to exaggerate eyebrows a bit and make them a little bit longer. It's just to exaggerate every feature, the same way you exaggerate your arms and your legs to make mm -hmm. it so grand yeah. and fluid. It also follows the same lines as your facial structure. So mm -hmm. your jawline goes up, your cheekbones go up. Mm -hmm. um, so then it's all parallel. Um, so I like to use a lip liner. And for Sugar Plum Fairy, we're gonna do a nice neutral pink. Let's take a look. Looks so good. All right, and this great. is a Sugar Plum Fairy look, ready for stage, ready for camera. Yeah. We're gonna move on to hair. We're gonna do a classic high bun. Um, I like to section the hair into three parts. We're gonna use a center part, and I come down and make a T-shape down to one ear and down to the other. This is gonna help her get some better definition and detail in her hair and also make it more secure for when she's dancing. We're gonna put most of it in a ponytail and the rest is gonna be pinned up. So we like to put her ponytail nice and high and then on each side, we're gonna give her a little bit of volume so she doesn't look bald on stage. We want it to be full enough that your hair is in line with your ear. Oh, okay. That way, your ears don't stick out if that's something you don't like, and it also creates more depth of your hair. So I'm gonna drape this up over the ponytail, and we're gonna pin this up. I like to either braid it or twist it, and this is gonna be the top of your bun. So we're gonna loop that up, and we're gonna oh, make so sure that it's right where you want the bun when you look from the front. 
And then we take the leftover hair from the sides and this is going to be the bottom of your bun. Ballerinas, contrary to popular belief, they don't actually like donut buns because um, it looks like an extra head on their head. <laughs> um, so they actually like a very tapered heart-shaped bun. Now we can perfect everything. We can put a hairnet on, very important for dancers. Once the hairnet is on, then you can really perfect your shape. So the profile is super important for ballet. You want this line to be one continuous shape with this bun. Her sides come swooping up. They follow her cheekbone lines. So for her headpiece, we're gonna make sure it's nice and center. And we're gonna fit it right around her bun. You also have to be aware of their balance um, because their balance and their center of gravity is so important. We also have to then pin it that way so it doesn't feel heavy on one side more than the other. Oh, wow. All right, and I think she is ready for costume. This is Tomoko Weta Dunbar, and she is the wardrobe supervisor at American Ballet Theater. Wow. We were talking earlier that whenever you bring or store a tutu, you store it upside down because when it's the other way, the gravity is pulling down on it. The, most of the classic tutu made with hoop, which is the wire is yeah. here. It's and that helps it keep up. Yeah, so it up. helps keep it up. But without it, it just keeps dripping down. Yeah, and this is like giving it a rest because there's no pressure Correct. on the tutu. It has Correct. space. Yeah. Yeah. So this is how you store a classical tutu. So this is the Sugar Plum Fairy tutu I will be wearing today. All of this decoration and stuff, how does this happen? Because you can make tutus as well. Yeah. You make the tutu bottom and then does the decoration go on top or is this, and this is a separate thing? Yeah, separate thing. Yeah. Like all separate things. And then this one is like dyed like ombre. So start from like dark pink into white. Some of them it's completely white. Yeah. Or some of them it's completely black. All right, and now Tomoko is going to help me get this on, and it'll be showtime. I just had such a wonderful experience today. I really enjoyed working hard, struggling a little bit, but also taking the steps to further this Sugar Plum Fairy variation within my own repertoire. I know for me, like the beginning section is always a little bit of more of a struggle for me. And kind of when we get some more momentum going, that's where I really feel like I was able to enjoy and kind of had that moment of like, I'm just gonna let go and do this because I can I can trust myself in this moment. And then at the end, the last big menage, that was so fun. It was so great to have the power and the adrenaline kind of behind what I was doing. I would love to do this again. It was such a great experience. We'll see what happens next time.